Good afternoon. I now call to order the June 16th meeting of the Budget Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. Baltimore County Public Schools and offices continue to be closed to the public and non-essential personnel in order to maintain the health and safety of our students and staff. In accordance with the Board of Education's amended resolution approved at the October 13th, 2020 board meeting, in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair, in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent, may declare that a board meeting or a board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members or in a hybrid manner with only some individual board members participating remotely, subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present and that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. As a result, today's budget committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through live stream on the BCPS website. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Bean if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Bean, would you please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee? Yes, Ms. Hen. Present. Ms. Pasture. Present. Ms. Jose. Present. Ms. Mack. Present. Mr. McMillian. Present. Thank you. Ms. Bean, would you please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting? Yes, Dr. Scriven. Mr. Saris. Present. Mr. Tantloff. Present. Thank you, and I think that's it. Dr. Scriven is present as well, thank you. Yep. Thank you, ma'am. I would now like to introduce Elizabeth Irwin, Deputy County Auditor and Director of Fiscal and Policy Analysis, as well as Carrie Vivian, Fiscal and Policy Analysis Supervisor from the Office of the County Auditor. They will be presenting legislative budget analysis on the BCPS proposed fiscal year 2022 operating budget. Good afternoon to you both and welcome. Good afternoon. Hi, thanks for having us. I'm Liz Irwin and I'm Deputy County Auditor and I've been um, assisted here by Carrie Vivian. Um, Carrie, do you want to say hi real quick? Good afternoon. Okay, um, so she's here to, to answer a lot of the questions that, that might come up um, and I'm going to walk through really what we do um, in our legislative budget analysis. Um, just a little bit about what we do. When the, when the birds start chirping and the flowers start blooming every spring right around the middle of April. The county executive releases um, his submits his budget to the county council and that's when we get extremely busy and um, are working nonstop to analyze the budget. We analyze for all the agencies including for education and um, so that happens in mid-April we get the budget and then by mid May, we are really wrapping things up. So we have a very compressed time period to try to analyze billions of dollars worth of spending. And um, we have a lot of back and forth with uh, questions and answers to the different agencies. Um, and so our Kate Carey, a lot of the time is, is back and forth with Wit and George um, asking questions and getting responses. And then also with our um, executives budget office as well because we are the step in the process that follows the county executive so the um, office of budget and finance and the county executive have already finished making their changes to the board's proposed budget so they, they that budget comes to us in mid-april and we are analyzing it so that we can explain it really to the county council because they really don't get that much time to study the budget and um, so we present a a a whole analysis package where we try to describe what's going on, what, what's going on in the budget, what are the significant new items, what are the um, changes from the previous year, and um, and then we 
let the council know what their options are. The council can only reduce the budget. They can't add to the budget. So if the county executive has reduced an item, the council can't add it back. They can only further reduce the budget. Um, and so we let them know what we identify potential items of reduction or just potential amounts for reduction that they can consider. We're not recommending those reductions. We're just identifying the potential items for them. Um, and then they, they can consider it and talk about it in the budget hearing with the superintendent. And um, so that's what that's what we do. And I'm going to share my screen so that you can see what our budget analysis package looks like. Hopefully this will work. Can you see my screen? Yes. OK, wonderful. This is our, our front page of our of our budget analysis here, and we are just identifying the proposed change from fiscal year 21 to 22. And please, if you have a question at any point, just interrupt me and ask away. I can't necessarily answer it. Um, it's possible that Carrie will answer it or that we'll turn to Wit or George. Um, we, we're not as in the weeds, anywhere near as in the weeds as they are with, it, with their budget. We are just trying to explain the budget to our county council members. Um, so, so here's our front page and we're just um, showing the proposed change from one year to the next. We, we're speaking in terms of general funds and special funds, but these general funds do not line up with the, with the Board of Ed general funds. These are county general funds. So this is the county's budget and the county's general funds are the county's, really the local funds that are coming from the county and the special funds are non-county funds. They're the state funds and the federal funds, as well as the prior year fund balance that um, gets put back into the budget. Usually there's about $30 million roughly each year that seems to go back into the, the budget. Um, and so, so sometimes it gets a little confusing when we're talking about general funds. We're talking about the county's general funds, not BCPS's general fund. Um, but at some point we do talk about BCPS's general fund, so I'll try to distinguish and make it clear. Um, so, so you can see this year that the, that the change in the county's general fund is $32 million and um, in the, the special funds is a much bigger change this year because of all the federal funding um, and a lot of state funding too. And that's the hundred and almost $160 million for a total change of $192 million or over 10%. Now these numbers, these changes were before there were some additional non-county funds um, recently brought before the council for approval. Um, and so the, the increase would be a little bit less if we considered that. But at the time that we were looking at the budget, those hadn't yet been approved um, for FY21. Um, so we just show a trend, you know, as far as we look at FY20 actual, FY21 appropriated, and then the FY22 request. And I will point out that the special funds are not actually appropriated by the council. They are just authorized for expenditure. Um, the actual appropriations are the general funds. That's sort of a technical issue, but um, it's, it could be a little misleading there that we have appropriation on the line. Um, and then we show an amount for the budget analysis. That's the bold line there. And that shows really as low as the council could go if they wish to reduce the budget for whatever reason. Um, and really over the years, they have not reduced the budget except for last year, which was obviously a very strange situation that we were in and, and the county needed to, to really tighten the belt just to make sure that, that we were going to be able to survive our our COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so we identified a potential reduction here of, of $27 million, and I'll get into that as we scroll forward here. At the bottom of our cover page, we have a, just a little personnel summary here showing how many positions there are authorized or, and proposed. Um, and it also shows vacancy data. So you can see, um, you know, Quite a few positions are vacant or were vacant as of May 5th. Um, and th these are this information is often like the vacancy data comes straight from our question and answers back and forth with budget um, officials. 
Next, we, we give a sort of lengthy narrative uh, summary of the operating budget. And, and this focus here is, is on the operating budget. This entire presentation that I'm doing here today is operating budget, not getting into capital today. Um, so the, the budget, the operating budget is about $2.1 billion. As I mentioned, reflects an increase of approximately 192 million, 10.3%. And um, we mentioned here the, the resolution that that was going to increase that I already mentioned, increase the non county funds uh, for FY 21. And we get into a little more detail about the breakdown, the general fund portion um, increasing by the 32 million and, and that driving that is personnel expenses really. And I'll I'll get into that on the next page. Um, and then that there the, the, with the reductions, there's some offsetting reductions, and you're probably all pretty familiar with this. Although things do morph along the way, so when the bud the budget comes from the board to the county executive, the county executive has made changes, and then once we get it, we are explaining what we get from the county executive. So we're no longer describing the board's budget anymore. We're, we're at that point, we're describing the county executive's budget. Um, and that's what this is doing. And um, I talk about the special. We talk about the special fund here, uh, 1.1 billion. It's it's bigger than usual here due to the CARES funding and the American Rescue Plan funding, and as well as um, the Kerwin funding. Um, and we talk about what the plans are for the use of those funds, and we get into that later in our package. Also, this is really just a summary. Um, the reliance on the fund balance and this is a lot of narrative here the, the uh expected decline the the decline in students during the current school year and then how it's there's an expectation that that enrollment will increase again however the budget as wit explained at your last meeting the budget is based on that prior year really enrollment um and so the the that that hold harmless amount really makes its way into these special funds this year. So we look, we, we never would want to identify potential reductions that would exceed what the county is required by law to provide under maintenance of effort. Um, and in this case, in this year, we would not want to recommend any amount or, or identify any amount that would uh, not qualify the county for the hold harmless grant, which is coming from the Department of Legislative uh, Legislative Services, has uh, estimated to be thirty one million dollars this year. Um, so, in order to be qualified for that, the county needs to needs to fund MOE plus a, about two point eight million more than that. So, a dollar more than last than FY twenty one funding. So next we have an exhibit of the total budget history. This is pretty basic, just showing the breakdown between county general funds and then the non-county funds. And you can see that there's been a pretty decent trend upward. And we have a typical pie chart here. This is the whole budget. Um, operating budget and you can see you're familiar you're pretty familiar with these categories here these are the state categories and the biggest one being instructional salaries and wages and another big one being the fixed charges which is the insur insurance and retirement mainly but other fixed charges and then this this um, exhibit 2b shows the, the sources of funding which we know the county is the blue and the, the special funds, the federal, state, and other, as well as that little sliver there, the use of fund balance, which these numbers look like thousands, 31,000 is actually 31 million. So. And next in exhibit three, and this one can be a little bit difficult to wrap your brain around because we're, we're not talking about the total amounts, we're only talking about the changes. Um, so we're, we're saying at the top how much it grows and then below, where does where does all that change go? So the $192 million in growth in the budget, how is that spread out across the budget? And 
you can see that personnel is growing by 17.6 million. That's this first line under where it goes. And that 17.6 million is composed of a bunch of other of, of other changes. 16.4 million for increments in longevity, 10.2 million for the 2% COLA that will be effective on January 1st of 2022. There's some smaller changes as well as some offsetting savings. So there's some additional turnover uh, this year that wasn't there in the budget last year. And then there is um, a decrease in the positions, which basically are being funded out of the, the special funds instead. But this is reflective of the part that is coming out of the general fund. The personnel related expenses are is the other big piece of the increase. That's the general fund and really the general and the state funds are, are yielding this $9.3 million increase in personnel expenses, mostly general funds for OPEB, which is retiree health care, $2 million for um, health insurance. Um, these are increases again. These are not totals, obviously, <clears throat> and some smaller amounts. Excuse me. <clears throat> and then we have one time expenses, which last year were 2.8 million for I'm saying last year is FY21 um, for FY22. The one time expenses are only 1 million, so that's a decrease in the one time expenses of 1.754 million. And this continues this this exhibit and shows the increases in in other operating expenses and really these are all pretty small compared to the size of the budget um, the increases in the operating expenses only totaling 1.3 million in total um, in, but, but we haven't touched on the big piece which is that federal amount of 164 million dollars down here and so that that's one where we don't really show the detail on that because that's all going into that federal and restricted program but you can see um, that food and nutrition services um, that's the mainly because of the cep being funded again out of that federal program so a lot of items here some of them are, are, are being funded out of that federal program. I, items that that look like decreases here um, in the budget. And debt service showing a, a, about a $4 million increase. And that comes to the $192 million. Carrie, did you want to mention anything else here or did you want to correct me on anything? Or, or Wit or George? No. no. OK, I do want Wit or George to correct me if I'm saying anything wrong. Um, it's been about a month since my head was in this as as deep as it as it was. <laughs> um, this next exhibit shows the change in general fund positions, BCPS general fund positions, and it and it shows the. Really, the teach 122 teaching positions due to the enrollment decline coming out. Um, and, and then as we know that they come back in using the special funds. And then we provide some highlights. We go into a little bit more detail or really just the, the main points that I've gone over here. And we, we, we tell you, we point you to where in the, the package here, we talk in some more depth about some of these issues, technology costs, um, the, the, the charter school, uh, Kerwin funding, and the federal funding. We point out that the budget exceeds the state's maintenance of effort re requirement by $30 million and how the state has provided that this that that we would receive the hold harmless grant from the state. The county basically has to maintain the funding that pr was provided in FY21, including the one according to DLS it, that includes the one time amount of the 2.8 004380. Um, so the county has to go a dollar above this amount um, in order to qualify for that hold harmless grant. So because it's our job, we 
identify the potential budget reductions. Again, we're not recommending anything. We just are identifying it in case that the council had a fiscal need or, um, to to take a reduction and um, explain these these funding requirements, the maintenance of effort and what we would need to fund in order to to get that hold harmless grant. So in order not to jeopardize the grant funds, the maximum potential reduction would be approximately twenty seven million dollars. And that is the amount shown on this purple bar here uh, for fiscal year 22 is the, the $27 million potential, the maximum potential reduction to the budget. Um, and this, we put this next to amounts that are remaining at the end of the year in fund balance in the, in the school system's general fund balance. Um, just to give some perspective that if the council were to take a reduction that it, it based on the past history of amount of fund balance that has remained at the end of the year, it, it, it wouldn't cause any major heartburn necessarily for that year at least. Um, and so the, the red, the FY20, all the blue is actuals. Um, you could see the green there in FY 2016. That was an amount that was transferred back to county government to cover some air conditioning projects. But each year you've seen a slightly increasing amount of fund balance through the last year for which we have actual figures, FY 20. And then in 21, this is the, um, the school's estimate for where the fund balance will be at the end of FY 21. And I'm not sure if that's been updated, um, probably has since we we got the estimate um but it, it that's a good question is whether or not is it going to be less than it was um or are there going to be more is it going to be up higher uh, at the end of fy21 so so then we just get into sort of explaining this about talking about this amount of 27 million dollars that could be a potential reduction <clears throat> and we we talk about really why could why could that be a reduction that wouldn't necessarily affect have have a serious effect on services or or anything so we we look at what what are the say typical savings in a budget year there's a lot of turnover savings um and so we did point out that turnover savings which are salaries that are budgeted but aren't needed um in full that that savings is it seems to come available each year. A lot of the time it's used in that year end budget appropriation transfer. So we get into some analysis of turnover here and these are a little bit confusing, but just to explain that there are salaries that are budgeted and then there is turnover savings that is budgeted. And so the, the amount of total salaries that are actually in the budget is less than what goes along with those positions because there's an expectation that people are going to retire and then when the new person's hired it's a it's a first year teacher or a teacher with at a lower level on the salary scale um, and i have a cat who's trying to get in front of my screen right now i'm sorry um, and then also, you could have a situation where there are vacancies. So those are the two main drivers of turnover. Um, so you can see for the FY22 budget that there are salaries of $1 million, 71 billion, 71 million um, as well as budgeted turnover savings of $20 million. And so the, the net amount of salary dollars that is budgeted is the one billion fifty one million. And then. So that is that that amount and I'm sorry, I'm scrolling back and forth because I think that I had up, up here. It's a budgeted turnover rate of one point nine percent that that twenty million in turnover is one point nine percent of the total salaries that that goes along with. And, and for FY21, it was, was similar. It was a, and this schedule is for some reason presented backwards. It's, it's correct, but it's showing the smaller amount on the left side and the larger amount on the right side, where the, the first column here is the FY21 salaries budget is the 1.033 billion with the budgeted turnover of 20 million 
And so the, 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 the greater amount is the 1.053 billion. The amount that's actually in the budget is the 1.033 million because of the budgeted $20 million in savings. And the actual experience ends up being that there's more turnover savings than $20 million. Um, the, the year end BAT included transferring approximately 12.5 million in salary savings to fund other expenses. So in addition to the 20 million savings that was planned, there's another 12.5 million in salary savings that is being transferred to fund other expenses. Um, and, and just, we don't have the whole shakeout yet for FY21. Uh, Witt and George are better to speak for where turnover will actually end the year, but we can show you FY20 experience. Um, so for FY20 experience, the budget was at 1.006 billion. That included an assumption of $20 million in the budgeted turnover savings. And the, the actual amount in FY20 was 985.5 million. And so you can see that there was an additional $21 million in turnover savings beyond what was budgeted. So in total, you had about $41 million worth of turnover savings. Um, and so we provided some information on vacancies, which I said that's one one thing that can be affecting this turnover at least, uh, amount driving it up is when you have vacant positions. And um, this is information on vacancies by the different activity or category. Um, you have budgeted positions and then the number of filled positions. And this is all as of May 5th. And you can see the number of vacancies there. We, we did two different presentations here. Th this is one presentation, the first three columns of numbers. And then the next presentation is adjusted to account for 44 FTE that were moved from instructional salaries to special education. And so you can see that what would have been to start the year 158 vacancies in instructional salaries, you have because of the moved positions, actually it's 114 vacancies once those positions are moved with some with some of those vacancies actually um, going into the special education program. And um, you know, definitely I'm not the one to talk about the, the nuts and bolts of the why or exactly what's, what's going on there. Um, although of course, the fact that it's a pandemic is certainly noteworthy for having such vacancies. Um, this does give you some perspective on the number of vacancies over over time at this time when we ask for the information uh, during the year. Of course, I'm sure there's vacancy reports that school officials are reviewing monthly. We, you know, are doing other things throughout the year, and when we turn to the budget, you know, we ask for the vacancy update, and we get it about this time each year in April or May. And um, so we have sort of a, a track record of, of where the vacancy stood each year when we've asked for it. And um, obviously in FY21, it's, it's at its highest level in several years. So all of this explains, at least in part, the, the higher turnover percentage than what is budgeted, that there's these vacancies. And then of course we know that there are retirements and we haven't really done a separate analysis of retirements. Um, we just frankly don't have enough time to, to pull all of that off uh, within our few weeks of, of turnaround time here. Um, so that that that's that discussion. And then we move on to another potential reduction because we try to identify if there's like a new initiative. Um, we'll put it sort of on the table that, you know, that's something that the council gets a chance to decide on um, whether they support it and want to fund it or not. This is a small item, but it's just something that was separated out in the budget document. So we figured we put it on the table for for discussion if they wanted to discuss it at the budget hearing. It was just $140,000 that, that are related to uh, moving the athletic director positions from 10 month to 12 month uh, employees, Liz, uh, which, Liz. yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. McMillian has a question on the side. I'm sorry, I didn't see that. <laughs> that that's sure. okay. I'm a former athletic director. So as I read this, the fact that the superintendent didn't have it in his budget, we didn't have it in our budget. Is this something that's going to be reevaluated? 
or is this something that's in the budget and it's going to stay there? Or do we need to make sure that it's included next year in the budget? Uh, Mr. McMillian, it's it's moving forward. They're planning uh, on July 1st, the athletic directors will be 12 month employees. Yeah, I understand that. I've inquired about that in the pay schedule and everything. But that last sentence just is alarming to me. Now, this potential reduction provides the council BCPS and accounting administration opportunity to discuss the necessity of the permanent reclassification, including whether it be necessary once schools are fully open. So that's my concern. Is this going to be another discussion about whether we continue this or is it there and it's going to stay there? And and. So this was our budget analysis, and this was what we provided to the county council when they were considering the budget. And we just put the we put this on the table as a potential reduction for the county council, and they did not take any reduction. So that was that's that's why the statement is there. It's it was just to spark discussion in the budget hearing, um, and then I I, I would fully trust um, Mr. Tantliff's. Uh, statement that it's moving forward um, as not not as a reduction, but as as funding. OK, so there's no alarm. There's no concern that we have to make sure that this is in there next year. I mean, I mean if, if, are people going to question whether this and th there's another phrase up there that talked about, you know, the paperwork or, you know, restarting that con particularly in the context of restarting school sports. So next year, and what's interesting is those items that it mentions, I did that job for 25 years. Every summer, regardless of the pandemic or in my opinion, or the ransomware attack, we had to do all those those things that are listed anyway. Uh, okay, I'm just concerned. I just wanna make sure it's there and it's gonna stay there and not be you know, discussed with the possibility of reducing it at some point in time. Thank you very much for, for dealing with me. Thank you. Whit, did you have anything else you wanted to add about that? No, Mr. McMillian, it, I mean, it's in the budget like everything else in the budget, so uh, it won't change unless the superintendent or the board proposes to change it in some way. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. And Liz, I had a question going back to number one, I believe, your first item. Okay. Analysis that talked about the 11 million um, potential reduction for um, due to turnover. Right. Did did your analysis look at the offsets um, in terms of increased budgeting for things like HR to um, focus on recruitment and efforts to fill those vacancies, or is was that outside the scope of what you looked at? This is more, we, we do historical analysis of essentially underspending um, of, of certain line items. And, you know, this is just one where salaries as a line item for the school system is historically underspent. Um, it, uh, it, we, and I'm saying that passing absolutely no judgment on that. Um, I'm not saying that I wouldn't have the same exact situation if I were, you know, in charge of BCPS budget, it's just a reality that there is some cushion there um, in in terms of of savings that, that go beyond what the budget actually anticipates. And so each year, as you as you see with the year end bat, with that cushion there, there that's used in other ways. So it's it's transferred to other purposes, and then there's still usually some savings even beyond what's in the in the bat each year. And so we just are we, we just identified an amount to put it on the table, really, for the council to consider if they felt the need to, for whatever reason, you know, they have to pass a balanced budget. So if they were to put forward any kind of a reduction on, you know, in terms of the revenue structure or anything like that, then they would have to come forward with the expense side reduction as well. So we give them options. We give them just, you know, possible things that they might consider and. Um, just potential reductions. And that's really where we were coming from with that. Um, so no, we weren't, we were basing it on historical uh, track record really with the underspending, not um, based on like ramping up with more HR efforts, that sort of thing. Thank you. And are any of those historical reports available to the public 
Um, I know the audit. I mean, this is really straight out of budget books that will show actual spending. The CAFR, the, the uh, okay. Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, that's all public. It should be online um, showing the actual actual versus budgeted spending. And so you can just, just looking at salaries, wherever you see that salary savings, that's the historical turnover savings that goes beyond what is budgeted. Thank you. I'm just going to scroll back down here. I apologize in advance if my dog starts to bark. She can't help herself. She's protecting us. OK, so then we get we get into discussion topics and the first topic this year really is the pandemic and just um, talking about instruction methods, virtual and hybrid instruction. And this is I'm not going to read all of this. It's just self-explanatory. Um, we but we do a question and answer, as I said, where we're, we're seeking some information so that we can provide the council with a briefing on on this topic of discussion and um, the staffing and recruitment and the retention issues. We talked about that already. Staffing ratios in general, BCPS advised, have remained unchanged for several years. No changes are anticipated for FY22. And here, or here they are, the staffing ratios. And then talking about recruitment. And then talking about the student learning supports that, that are really getting put in place in response to the pandemic related student learning loss. And you're all very familiar with these, I'm sure. But the county council might not have been as familiar with them, so we needed to, you know, give them that background. And then providing some information on the savings um, that came as a result of the COVID pandemic and the, the funding that's coming as well, um, which I know that you've already received a briefing on that. We were getting similar information, you know, in our in our Q and A with with the budget um, group, and we really appreciate the responsiveness that you know we ask the questions and they're all answered, and it's very helpful because that allows us to be able to inform um, our bosses. And um, so this is this is a review here of of the amounts that came in with for the CARES funds. This is Carrie. What is this? Or somebody want to chime in here? The 51 million. This was what was already received in in, in the FY 2021 timeframe. Is that right? Yes. Thanks. Liz, Miss Mack has a question about this section. Okay. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I'm not seeing it when people have questions. I'll I'll chime in when they do. Thank you, Miss Mack. Go ahead. Yes, um, thank you very much for all of this. My question is, <clears throat> does the 365 million in CARES and ESSER funds, number one, include the 51 million that we're looking at here? And does it include the 54.5 million that was brought to the County Council in a resolution on June 7th? So I think the 365 million, and please, again, everybody correct me if I'm wrong, the 365 million in the various stimulus money is to be utilized over several fiscal years um, beginning in FY22, but the 54.5 million um, in FY21, was that, that was that additional authorization that hit FY21. Is that correct? I believe what you said was correct. Yeah, so the, um, the 360, Five um, million dollars included the 51.1 million in CARES 1, 96.7 million in CARES 2, 
and then $217 million in the ARP funding. Oh, so that is does that contradict what I said? I probably I was wrong then. I thought I thought that the 365 million started in FY22. The 365 includes all of the stimulus yeah. money the BCPS okay. is receiving. Okay, so I'm sorry. I miss I, I misunderstood that. Does that may answer I, your question? May I ask a follow up question to that, please? Of course. So your the document that when you started out reference a two, $2.1 billion budget, which reflects an increase of 192 million or 10.3 over the FY21 budget. Then we talked just now about the 54 million that was the resolution on June 7th. And of course, we just talked about the $365 million in CARES and ESSER funds. What is the total amount of the FY22 budget dollars that BCPS will have to work with. I want to let Georgia Witt be sure, be sure that they, they explain that correctly, just because it's not at the front of my mind as, as well as it should be. I, I didn't understand that question, Ms. Mack. So oh, the summary also included that we were 40.1 million or 4.7% over maintenance of effort. So I know that that is some amount of money. Then we just talked about that we got 365 million in CARES and ESSERS, and and I'm sorry, the 54.5 million. I think Miss Vivian, you said was included in the 365. So I guess my question is, the proposed budget plus the 40.1 million or 4.7 percent above maintenance of effort, plus the 365. What is the total amount of money? that BCPS will have to spend through the FY22 budget cycle. Well, Ms. Mack, the, it, the CARES fund, um, the majority of it we've not even received an application for. So the 217 uh, million that passed most recently, that's included in that total. We've not even received the application for that. So- You mean ARP, uh, ARP not CARES? The, the, the ESSER, the, yeah, I mean, but it's in that total bucket that we're talking about. Yeah, it, the most recent legislation, the ARP legislation, which is 217 million, um, that will be split between FY22, 3, and 4 once that application is finalized, but it we haven't even received it yet. We hope too soon, so um, th those dollars um, will have to be allocated. And um, just to make one clarifying point, the amount over maintenance of effort is 30 million. I think that there was a miscalculation at some point in the process um, uh, because there were, were, was a changing um, definition of how you calculate the maintenance of effort amount um, at the state level as far as doing an average of enrollments um, or, or the, the highest of the three years that are being considered. And so the, the calculation for MOE stands at 30 million over MOE. Um, and what is MOE? Maintenance of effort, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. What What is the dollar amount? Okay, I'm gonna I, get I know to it's that. the 30 gonna... million over, but over what amount? Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm scrolling down to our, at our an appendix in our budget package here that will show that. Here's our calculation. This is um, at the end of our budget package, and this budget package is available on on the um, on our website. Um, the calculation. So it's it's this, this is the 30 million over the MOE amount of 858 million. And, and understanding that, that that's the amount that in total that the county is sending in county funds, the 858 plus the, the 30 million equals the 888 million, um, plus, plus of course, the, the one time only exclusions from maintenance of effort um, for the startup of uh, Northeast Elementary or the Ridge Road Elementary and um, the debt service amount, which is excluded from the calculation. So all of that is, is that county chunk that, that's going um, to the school system. Um, and and then the federal 
funds and the state funds, everything is summarized at the beginning of the budget document as far as what is being appropriated th this year. Um, not appropriated, I'm sorry, it's special funds that are being authorized by the county government. Um, so that amount, that, that increase that we saw way up, I'm gonna go up as fast as I can here. Actually, I can show you this appendix instead of being at the top of the document, I'll go all the way here to the end. We have an appendix that summarizes all the funding by category, um, the general funds and the special funds. And you can see the changes from year to year. Um, so here's the administration program. You see the actuals that were spent in FY20, the appropriation in FY21, which does not include that additional 54 million um, in special funds. And then the FY22 request. And um, you can see how, how each category um, has changed from FY21 to 22. And at, at the bottom, which is on the next page, the total. Actually, where's the, where's the total? Is there a total? <laughs> is it missing a total? Here it is. Grand total, the next page. So that's the $192 million increase. That was all, you know, that, that was also mentioned at the beginning of the budget analysis when we sum summarized it. And here's the here's the funding recap that the general funds are increasing by the 32 million special funds by 160 million for a grand total of the 192 million. So if I add the 2 million and the 192 and then the difference between the 365 and the 217 million for which we've not yet received the application, that would be the total amount of funds that we have at our disposal. Would that be a correct statement? I might have missed some of that, but I will say that when we're appropriate, when the, when the funds are being authorized at, in the budget process, it doesn't mean that they've been received yet that it's it's what's the expectation that they're going to be received and that then it's giving the authorization to expend them once they are received. So um, just because it's budgeted now and we haven't yet received an application doesn't mean that we're not going to receive them and be able to spend a portion of them. So I guess your question might be what portion of the funds are authorized for expenditure in the FY22 uh, budget and how much will be left then for future fiscal years is that no I, I think you've answered my question thank you very much very much great you're welcome and i um, happy to provide more clarity if if I didn't if I missed something <laughs> um, going back here we do provide a little bit more detail on the future years So this is um, some of the information about like the F what's what's planned for FY23, um, and and this shows some of the interesting items here that the county executive uh, funded using these these federal funds, including the extended day, the fifteen the fifteen minute extended day um, for thirty million in FY22, and you can see that 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 again will be another thirty million in FY23. Um, and, and some of these other items, the smaller items. Um, but it's it's notable that about $42 million in recurring costs are funded out of this pot of federal funds. And at some point, I mean, the federal funds run out and these costs will have to hit the, the general fund. Um, and so presumably there's a plan for, you know, getting that moved into the general fund at some point. What was the number? Pardon me, Liz. What was that it's, number? Again? It's right here. This 42 million is it shows the amount of uh, that's sort of carrying forward um, into FY23 for these cost items that are being fed funded out of out of grant funds. And I mean, depending on what's going to be continuing and, and what you know might not. That's that's the amount, though, that would, you know, from a fiscal sustainability perspective that will need to find its way into 
you know, the general fund at some point. Thank you. Mr. Kuhn has a question. Thank you. Um, this this is a really big question in my mind, and thank you very much for pointing it out because in essence, it's a fiscal cliff, right? So the county or the state is going to have to come in and come up with th those funds because we've extended our, these aren't just, you know, one-time spending. The, the extended day of 15 minutes isn't going away after these funds do. So this is the, the use of CARES fund here um, of one time, in essence, one time funds over two fiscal years uh, is, is setting up the county to have to increase the budget. Um, and is the expectation that the county would have to fund this this money going forward I mean, or, course, or the state or would it be shared? Great, a great question. And of course, being the fiscal oversight people, we, we definitely ask that question um, and have been assured that that there is a, a an effort, a, a absolute determination not to create a fiscal cliff. That um, there will be, as the Kerwin funding ramps up from the state, and as savings are identified in the efficiency study, and that that there is sort of a a plan that the these funds will be able to go back to the general fund. And George and Witt, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, you know, it it's funded for a specific purpose under the CARES grant. I think, um, you know, there have been conversations with the county that this will, uh, you know, it could go one more year on the new ARP grant. Um, I think tentatively there's a plan to do that. And then we would just need to uh, evaluate at that point where we are four years down the road. But I think the intent is to continue it, but right now it's grant funded for a specific purpose. So that means it's not 100% guaranteed once the grant ends. And then just uh, to follow on with this specific chart, the 122 FTEs that are funded in FY22 are not funded in 23. So I guess that the note says that the expectation is that we will bounce right back up to the 115 plus thousand children in order to get that funding through a, a formula. But if that's not the case, then there's no guarantee that we would hold on to those positions. Is, is that what I'm saying here? Um, what that's really saying, Mr. Kuhn, is we, um, you know, enrollment drives revenue for the following year from the state. Um, and when we were early in the budget cycle, we weren't sure, and I guess we're still not sure where enrollment will, will land. So we tied um, our teacher headcount to what our enrollment was at the time, and it was a way to um, balance the budget in a logical way. Um, so those teachers are funded next year, and we believe enrollment will bounce back. If enrollment doesn't bounce back, let's just give a worst case scenario. Let's say enrollment's flat to this year. That would mean we don't need those teachers to keep our um, teacher to student ratio. But we're assuming that will, uh, you know, our predictions that um, we worked with with the SAGE group as usual had our enrollment um, bouncing uh, back actually above where it was a year ago. So if that comes to fruition in September, then that'll generate revenue the following year that would pay for those teachers, if that makes sense. Yeah, and thank I, you. I might also add that keeping in mind the previous chart on vacancies, that there are, you know, over 100 vacant teacher, uh, instructional salaries uh, vacancies. I'm not, I don't want to say teachers because I don't have the detail in front of me, but um, and then as well as um, s several dozen within the special education category. So um, it, it's not, it, it's not like necessarily that these are all filled positions. Is, is that, is that fair to say, Whit? Well, they're all budgeted positions. So, I mean, like anything else, you're working to fill all your budgeted positions. Right. 
but yeah, certainly they're not all going to be filled at any point in time. Thank you. I believe Ms. Joes has questions at this point. Thank you, Ms. Owen, for this presentation. Um, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. Um, so this looks like you're identifying trends on the budget, and it looks like you're relying heavily on information provided by Mr. Tancliffe and Mr. Saras. Um, so my question, and I don't know if you want to wait till the end, is the year-end budget appropriation transfers, and how important is this for your analysis? Um, and I also want to thank Mr. Tancliffe and Mr. Saras because a lot of this information they've already kind of presented to us during the budget work uh, sessions. So if you could explain the bad transfer process and how you um, incorporate it into your analysis, that would be helpful. Thank you. Sure. Um, yes, so we are doing our analysis at a point in time, and that's when the council is you know, studying and considering, deliberating on the executive's proposed budget, um, and they have to pass that budget back before the end of May. Um, so that it, uh, that's the window of time that we have to look at it. And at that point, there there was not on the table yet the the bat. Um, so we the, we are showing an adjusted appropriation for FY21 that did not include the the bat amounts. Once those those bat amounts occur, then that that does change the distribution of funds, but not the totals. So. Um, and and as far as the additional county spending as well, it, it also um, is that right, Carrie? Do I have that right? Did we have the when did we get the bat? We had not prepared the fiscal note yet when we were working on the budget, but we did have some of the documents um, and know that there was savings. I think related to the turnover, for example, that would be available. Thank you. So, so, and and we're also used to the fact that there is a bat pretty much every year, and we know that there might be some some changes in use of, you know, the the but funds deviating from the way that they were budgeted, and usually it does come from a lot of it does come from the turnover uh, savings. Um, so, but it doesn't in, in any way invalidate. I don't think our analysis. Um, or make it any less meaningful. Yes, I got that. Thank you. Okay. And so um, as we're doing, and I, I know we're running up on 630 now, um, but the last thing I'll, I'll mention is that we, um, in our analysis, we usually just, because we only have a few weeks, we're going through our analysis, we have our back and forth, and sometimes there are some lingering questions or just sometimes maybe some points that we think might be uh, meaningful for the council to discuss with the superintendent if they if they have time or if they you know want to discuss them or if they haven't already discussed them some at some point and so we just list possible discussion items um, and so that's in our analysis and you know there for you to look over and um, you know Pose yourself if you're interested. Um, the other issues that we have in our package this year include the technology, which I know you've you've talked a lot about as far as the ransomware attack um, and virtual instruction and, and things like that, network security, uh, and then getting in, uh, into more of a discussion about the, the Kerwin and the um, federal funds and then we had a, a little write up on the watershed public charter school, which had showing an increase of almost a half a million dollars for, um, I guess another, is that another grade? Um, and then we have an issue on transportation. Um, when I say issue, it's just a discussion, discussion point, topic for discussion. Um, and so, you know, you, you you can read this. You might have already read it, um, but that's that's basically our analysis. And I've already um, talked a little bit about these appendices, which show the the summaries of the amounts for the actual appropriated and requested. And then at the very end of the package, 
is the maintenance of effort calculation, which this year really um, the hold harmless amount is the is the amount that's a little bit more important. Um, we, we wouldn't want to lose that hold harmless grant from from the state. So we need to fund a little bit more than maintenance of effort this year, but it is a $30 million amount over maintenance of effort um, based on the final calculations. And that's that's about it. Ms. Han. Here, Ms. Pat. Yes, oh, Ms. Here. Thank you. OK, uh, first, uh, uh, Ms. Her Aaron, er mm, Erwin and Vivian, all of that quickly. I want to thank both of you uh, for your time and for doing this. Um, we know that you have worked very dil most diligently with our staff and they've done an exemplary job with trying to support us and give us the answers that we need. So thank you. I particularly want to uh, thank you for your last comments about um, the whole harmless um, funds that we do want to make sure that we're nurturing them correctly and um, being appropriate with them um, because that is like a special gift. Um, the Kerwin and well, your comments tonight as well about the money that's coming in and Mr. Tantler uh, and, and talking about not having seen uh, what the applications look like, et cetera. That's important because sometimes we do think that we're getting this big lump of money at one time that we can just go forth and, and spend. So your clarification on that was most appreciated along with our staff that uh, we have to wait and things come in often in increments and we're, especially the Kerwin money. The Kerwin money has a life of its own over a large period of years. So thank you very much for the presentation. I think it possibly cleared up some things that even if you read uh, the numbers that might not have been uh, really clear to some of us. So thank you and for taking this time to do it. Um, and thank you, Ms. Han. Thank you, Ms. Bestier. Um, I also want to express my appreciation. This, um, you know, Liz and Carrie pulled this together um, quite rather quickly. Um, we've been trying to make this happen and I'm just so thrilled that you both could be here um, with the committee. It you really connected a lot of dots for me, and I know you did for um, other board members as well. And it's helpful to hear even the same information sometimes from a different source and hear it presented. It aids in comprehension. It aids us in getting the big picture. And we are so grateful to um, the county as our funding partner, and we want to be a responsible steward of those resources. So I hope this is the, the beginning of continued dialogue, and we really appreciate your perspective and for you sharing your time and wonderful talents with us and for working with our amazing fiscal team because we we know that a lot more goes behind the scenes than than we have time to discuss in an hour meeting and how much work i can't even imagine was involved in creating your incredible fiscal analysis and i think those are some excellent discussion um topics that the committee will consider in future meetings and we hope that um should you need us or should we be able to support you that you can call on us as as well um, because we recognize the partnership and and look forward to to that. So thank, thank you. For, thank you for not falling thank asleep. You. We appreciate that. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you all very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank uh, you. The next meeting of the committee will be on September 22nd, 2021. A list of proposed fiscal year 2022 budget committee meeting dates have been posted to board docs. Because there is no further business, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Good night. Take care.